Oil and gas giant Shell has won its appeal in a landmark climate ruling. A Dutch appeals court announced on Tuesday that Shell does not have to sharply cut its greenhouse gas emissions as previously ruled, delivering a blow to environmental activists. Bitter disappointment. Tears flow as activists watch their hopes to get hard emissions cuts from oil and gas giant Shell disappear. But coming out of court, environmental campaigners were defiant. The fight against dangerous climate change is a marathon, not a sprint. And the race has only just begun. In 2021, activists reveled as a ruling ordered Shell to cut 45% of its net carbon emissions by 2030, compared to 2019 levels. It applied to Shell's own emissions and those of its customers who use oil and gas in cars to heat their homes and beyond. A landmark ruling. It was the first time a company had been legally forced to take on such drastic climate measures. Challenging the ruling, Shell argued in court that it was being unfairly targeted and that other companies would take over any fossil fuels it did not extract. Judges at the appeals court in The Hague said Shell could not be held to a specific legal goal or reduction of its greenhouse gas emissions. Shell's chief executive welcomed the ruling in a written statement. Our target to become a net zero emissions energy business by 2050 remains at the heart of Shell's strategy and is transforming our business. We're making good progress in our strategy to deliver more value with less emissions. Environmentalists disagree and are likely to look to the Supreme Court to appeal the decision. Their hope? For oil giants to be held responsible for the emissions caused by burning their products. Let's speak to the director of the group that brought that case against Shell, uh, Milieu Defensi, or Friends of the Earth Netherlands. Donald Pauls joins us now from The Hague. Uh, you might have seen him just there in that report. Welcome. To DW, this must be a, a disappointing result for you. Can we get your reaction first, please? Yeah, you can imagine that uh, that we are very disappointed. We um, hoped that the court would confirm the ruling in first instance in the appeal uh, that Shell should reduce its CO2 emissions in accordance with international climate agreements. That did not happen. And you've called this a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, will you be appealing the result? Uh, we will first study the uh, ruling by the judge thoroughly and then decide what our next steps uh, would be. But an appeal is clearly uh, one of the more realistic options. Now, for our viewers who have not been following this case closely, can you just tell us a little bit uh, about, about Shell's emissions, about what it does that you felt it was so important to take this case to court? Shell is one of the largest polluters in the world. If Shell was a country, its emissions would only be trumped by uh, India, China, uh, Russia and the US. Um, and by forcing Shell to reduce its emissions in accordance with international climate agreements, we would have changed uh, the struggle against dangerous climate change because it will not only impact Shell itself, but all large polluters. At this stage, 57 companies are responsible for 80% of all global emissions. We can only achieve climate stabilization if these companies are also forced to implement international climate agreements. So just so I understand the nuances of this case in particular, uh, Shell says that the Paris Climate Agreement uh, applies to governments, that, that that's where people should be directing their efforts. Does this court ruling support their case? No, it doesn't. Uh, the court ruling in itself is rather complex because the court recognized that Shell has uh, is contributing to dangerous climate change and through the dangerous climate change to human rights violations, that Shell has the obligation, the legal obligation, to reduce its contribution to dangerous climate change uh, and that the more than 800 new oil and gas projects planned by uh, Shell is contradictory to international climate agreements and its responsibility to not contribute to uh, human rights viol violations. Um, 
that and then the conclusion uh, unfortunately the judge said while shell has the obligation to reduce its co2 emissions it is unclear specifically what the reduction target of shell should be and therefore the judge decided to not confirm the outcome of the court uh, in the first instance so it was this issue of specific reduction targets that came into play here. What do you think the court's ruling yeah. means for the future of courts as, as an avenue for holding non-government climate polluters accountable? Yes, um, of course, this gives mixed signals. That is uh, clear. Um, purely on the legal uh, side, because the judge ruled that Shell has the obligation uh, to reduce its CO2 emissions and therefore limit its contribution to human rights violations. This can be used in court cases in the future. Uh, and in that sense, it's a platform for further climate cases, not only in the Netherlands, but globally. Of course, uh, as Milieu Defensi itself, in this specific case, we, we would need to recuperate and uh, uh, reorientate ourselves on how to move forward because the ruling in the end did not uh, confirm our claim. Well, thank you so much for joining us on DW News to speak about this. This was Donald Poles, a director of Medio Defensi. Uh, we very much appreciate your time this evening. Thank you very much.